Do you have any questions? That essentially brings me to a close of what I wanted to talk about was yesterday and today. After this, I want you to write some code. So, we would pick up some problems which we will write, but before that, some introspection stroke question asking time. In the morning session in the version control, uh, you open a particular file, you delete one line and again write the same line on the same position. Uh, will it be taken as a modified or adding or? It will be taken as modification because the programs do not have any intelligence. They will essentially look at file stamp. And some which identically type the same thing, we will test it. We will test it in a slightly different place. So, that is a file A, copy A to B, we are not using the mercurial diff, you are using the Linux command line utility called diff, but they both operate on the same principles. In fact, diff is the basis for version control. To take a small historical aside, the whole idea of version control was how do I store multiple versions without losing space. Today we have gigabyte disks, but in the early days of computers, space saving was as important as anything else. So, somebody came up with the idea of I have a original file plus the deltas only. I had a 100 line file. So, version 2 was line 4 replaced by this, line 7 and 8 deleted. In position 12, these two lines added. If I keep only that, both copies are now occupying much less space. So, essentially, that is how the original source code control system SECS was born. So, it is a series of shell scripts using diff and another thing called patch. Okay. Now, let us edit this B, delete the line. Again, it is not a current because it is doing a textual comparison. Most probably, the diff inside Mercurial will do the same thing because that diff and this diff would be sharing source code, is my memory. But test it out at some time. I am leaning to the side, it will be the same. For the nth time, note the absence of any output when the files are same. You ask me what is the difference, there is no difference, so I have nothing to say. So, there is no output. Text inside that. Yeah, they are. Diff would do that. The yeah, diff this here no it is the diff Parish. there will do the same thing because it is. Like I said, the underlying algorithms are the same diff. So, I am guessing, I am still guessing, I am not authoritatively telling you it will do the same thing. I am still guessing the same algorithm is operation in the HG diff also and it will do the same thing. Let us test it out.
Okay, I am editing this to. I will delete this line, repaste that line. Okay. Now, I have to save. Let us see. No change. It does not show the as modified. I have deleted two letters, typed in the same. So, essentially I have replaced a line by itself, right. It does not see it as change, because it was using the same diff. There is nothing to commit. Commit it means my working copy is different from the last committed one. According to it, there is nothing. I just removed the other files. Shall we? Nothing changed. There is nothing to commit. No. But well, this is interesting. It doesn't add much to our handling of versions. It confirms that the people who wrote these systems have applied a lot of intelligence, that is all. So, that is an interesting point. It is a good quiz question, good quiz question to ask. No. Anything else? Or rather, next question, there has to be something. Anything else encourages to say no? We are with the version 1 of the code, and uh, uh, if we are committing 2 3 times. And then there is a requirement of going back to the first point. Uh, I do not think it is possible. Is it You're possible? Thinking huh? You are thinking wrong. You can uh, say selective undo. I, I mean, yes. I, I know that it is only last commit and delta will be stored that you, you say. You can get back a specific version. Uh, first version of the code. Oh, yes. Then uh, committing up to certain level, 2 3 levels. So, version 2, version 3, log 1. Now, there are yes. 0, 1, so log 2. is updated. So many are there, right? Huh. So many versions. So I want version one now. Is there any upper limit? No limit. Whatever Lock versions are there, increase. anything can be got. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. Correct. This progressive scan. Sorry? Something like progressive scan. <laughs> it keeps on increasing. Yeah. Okay. We probably do not see that because, oh sorry, we have used the same file and we have made minor changes. The best way to see it is possibly. Got a file called version.
I think I deleted something else in between. I wanted to show one, two, three, four, so that you know which has come because in that file it is not, but it will get you the one you want. All right. Anything else in any of the Python stuff, version control before we move on? Yeah, we have about 40 minutes, which is a reasonable time for the exercise I have in mind. That is not a test, that is a testing tool. Okay, unit test we saw for each module you write one unit corresponding unit test module, for GCD you write a test GCD. So, a large application can have modules spread in a nice directory structure. I can have a menu, then sales, this, that. So, the code will be distributed in a directory structure. So, you will have for each of them a corresponding unit test. How do you run all of them? You have to go to each directory and run, which is a pain. So, nose job is it will sniff for all these fellows and run all of them. It is simply a another convenient tool. Again, nothing much to learn there. It is simply you have to know the syntax. It is a idea is that unit tests are always for auto module at a one unit level, but when you want to do what is called regression testing, you want to you have made a change you want to run all the unit tests. So far, we have not seen anything which gives us the easy way. The way we have done so far is you have to go run each unit test module, which is a pain if you have hundreds of modules. NOS will automate that job for you, that is all. So, it works at one level higher than unit test or doc advantage of NOS is it does not care whether you have unit test or doc test or whatever, it will run everything. All right. Next question. Yes, Anish. Other than the basic image processing things that we have seen yesterday, anything uh, like if you want to process for the filtering and all such things, so that support is available with Python. There is a among the Python aficionados, there is a phrase for the language. It is called Python is a batteries included language. Just as IM read function is available with us, do we have uh, functions to read MP3 and uh, video related files by UV? So, if we want to process some elements and look into that, uh, that functionalities are possible? I do not know specifically, but in general the answer is normally yes. You have a large number of libraries for handling different things. Do you have the Python docs online? I mean, on your machine. Let's take a look at the Python document library reference, built-in types, data types. You have a daytime module, calendar, these are built in modules, collections, heap queue, bisect, array. Obviously, NumPy has even more better arrays, it is the same. Mutex queue, weak reference, user list, pretty printing, numeric and mathematical function, these are built in by the way meaning they come along with python without going to numpy or scipy. You have a decimal, so you can do decimal math. You can handle fractions, you can add 2 by 3 plus 2 by 5 and get a fractional number rather than one floating point number. In file and directory access, you have all these modules. So many different ways of doing data persistence. You can read gzip, tar files, all of that. So, XTR data you can code, the following cryptographic services. Once again, these are basic, that is all available. You want AES or anything, there are third party libraries which are available. These are, if you install Python, coming to you by default. So many OS related, 
IPC, email, JSON, mail cap, mailbox. So, effectively you can send an email from within a Python program, SMTP to receive, so a whole lot of markups, you can generate HTML, XML, parse it. You can read a website like a file, syntax is almost the same. For line in URL lib 2 dot open, so and so dot com, it will give you the page line by line. Once again, you rarely write more than a few lines of code. These are the multimedia services. You can see very many different files can be written. I do not know whether MP3 files I think are outside this, these are, huh? yeah. so others will be available. These are graphical user interfaces, whole sort of development tools, doc test and unit test which we just now saw. And there are others, there is a debuggers, Then there are Windows Unix specific services, a whole host of them. Now, if you so if you are looking at something specific, you may want to simply Google for it. Chances are very high you will find it. For example, you want to do extensive data warehousing type of and uh, analysis of data, large scale data analysis, there is a package called orange written in Python, completely open source, huge volumes of data. Similarly, there is a bio Python module which is gives you a lot of biochemistry, biophysics analysis built in. You want to do natural language processing? one of the largest toolkits called NLTK is available. You can do significant amount of natural language processing. You want AI toolkits? Yes, lot of specific things are available, DSLs are available. Almost whatever you want is available. So, I just typed python mp3 parser, I walked into something called pymedia.org. So, so python, pymedia library is a python module for wave, mp3, org, ava, dvx, ding dong, ding dong, allows you to parse, demultiplex, multiplex, decode and encode. I have no idea what all those things mean. If they mean something to you, you got it. Some of you have expressed an interest in 3D visualization or 3D, please look at Mayavi. Mayavi is written by our own Prabhu Ramachandran by the way, which is probably the single largest open source application contributed out of India. It is a huge application, we can probably take a look at. That is Mayavi. If you are interested in these sort of things, I suggest you 
keep in touch for the next sci-fi conference in India. Every year we have a scientific python conference where a large amount of act, uh, for example, Berkeley neurosciences group has huge amount of python work they do and they are a big contributors to sci-fi. And of course, all of it is free, Maya V is free, you can download, install. VTK, this uses VTK, VTK, which is fairly standard. I mean, as far as visualization goes, VTK is a reasonably standard format. So, Maya V can read VTK, read and write VTK format. Anything else? All right. So, maybe let us write some code. What shall we write? I will give you a description. If you discuss amicable pairs, The problem is to generate a list of all five digit amicable pairs. Two numbers are said to be amicable if the aliquot of the first is equal to the second number and the aliquot of the second number is equal to the first number. What do you mean by an aliquot of a number is the sum of the factors of a number for the purposes of the aliquot definition. A factor is any number smaller than the given number including one that divides the number without a remainder. So, given this way of defining a factor, aliquot of a prime is obviously 1 and aliquot of 2 power n is 2 power n minus 1, because 1 plus 2 plus 4 up to 2 power n minus 1, which is nothing but a power set addition. So, that those two examples are given just to give you an idea of what aliquot is. So, go ahead. Create a repository, write some code. Anybody has anything to say, comment on the aliquot problem or sorry, the amicable pairs? All right.
that the time it took about 25 seconds less than 25 seconds and that is the code. If you do not have any questions, we will declare the program understood and stop the session. Anything interesting to note in the program? Any construct we have not seen so far or anything done differently or any particular why, why is he doing this somewhere? Sorry? Crystalline. Crystalline is quite interesting. Quite interesting, yes. You know these days of retail malls, buy one get one free style. If you find one factor, you should get one factor free. If f is a factor, n by f is obviously another factor, so there is no need to find it twice. Another wrinkle which I do not know whether anybody noticed, you cannot run it all the way equal to n divided by 2. Your divisors will be from 2 to uh, the half of that number. Final Not half, square root of that square root. Oh. 2 to square root of that number. Okay. Because for every factor below the square root, there is a corresponding factor above the square root. So, if I can find all the factors below the square root, I automatically found all the factors above. That is where most of the speed up comes. I cannot do equal to here because if it is a perfect square, the square root will get added twice. It is a small bug. So, you have to be a little careful because when you add the factors of a number for a perfect square, you do not say 16 has 1, 4, 4. You say 16 has 2 factors 1, 4 that is all. 1, 2, 4, 8. You do not say 1, 2, 4, 4, 8. So, if you wrote equal to, you will end up adding 4 twice. So, that is the only bit of care you have to take. Otherwise, the code is fairly straightforward. The other wrinkle is to ensure if A comma B is reported, B comma A should not be reported. That we ensure by checking. We got a number and we ensure the aliquot of that number is always greater than that number. So, we always report in ascending order. So, automatically the other pair will not be reported. And we are careful to find the aliquot of the other number after checking that, so that we save that much of computation also. Every bit helps in order to get that 22 seconds. All right. That brings us to the end of what I wanted to talk about and share with you. Thanks a lot for putting up with so much of Python in so short a time. Do keep in touch ask us any time any questions. If you have uh, on Moodle till the end of the course and on the mailing list or you have access, you know our mail IDs I presume. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon on the next workshop.